Well, my first guest, Jean Vanier, is a Canadian philosopher, humanitarian, and Catholic thinker best known for founding L'Arche, a supportive community for the disabled. Born in 1928 in Geneva, Switzerland, to the famed Governor General George Vanier, Jean spent his childhood between Canada, England, and France, as his father was posted to various diplomatic positions at home and abroad. During the height of World War II, when he was only 13, Jean asked for and received his father's blessing to join the Navy. And after a successful nine-year stint serving in the English and then Canadian Navy, Jean resigned and moved to Paris to begin studying philosophy and theology, eventually completing a doctoral thesis on the work of Aristotle in 1962. After a short stint teaching at St. Michael's College and the University of Toronto, Jean left academia and returned to Paris in 1964. It was there that he bought a small home in a village outside of Paris and invited two men from an institution to come live with him. The home, which he called L'Arche, quickly grew into a worldwide network of communities for those who had been shunned, mistreated, or otherwise neglected by society. The phenomenon quickly grew, and today there are over 130 large communities in 30 countries around the world. He has spoken about his spiritual beliefs in several best-selling books. In 1995, he delivered the Massey Lecture, Becoming Human, which details his experience of being touched by the weakest among us. He is well known for his philosophy that it's not through strength or competition that we achieve our highest self, but through accepting and recognizing the inherent vulnerability and frailty in ourselves and others. When he's not traveling or speaking, Jean Vanier still lives in the original large community in France, and that's why I reached him by phone. Hello. Hello. Yes. Is this, this is Jean? Yes. Well, thanks so much for doing this. Now, what can I do for you? I guess I wanted to, to try to square your philosophy compared to how most of us are used to living our, our life. I mean, our, our society right now, both at the individual and societal level, certainly seems to be, be enamored with the idea of competition. But you see that as sort of a, not a way to find our highest self. I mean, one thing you wrote that I found interesting is you said, because we're looking for the infinite, and we don't, we feel empty, that's why we, we look for more. What, what do you mean by we're trying to commune with the infinite? But I think that everybody wants more money, more time, more power, more this, more that. Uh, nobody is satisfied with, with the now. So there's always more, more, more. Whereas uh, what we've learned here at last, living with people with disabilities, is to learn to be happy and to love each other, which is something very simple, and, and to accept each person just as they are. Whatever they, uh, whatever their culture or religion, just to to love people as they are, never to necessarily to have more or be more or be in competition, but just to celebrate life together. It's as simple as that. Maybe it's too simple. <laughs> I mean, I was curious about your life as as a young man. I mean, you joined the navy when you were thirteen. And you were you were in the navy for is it eight years? Yep. Um, and I even read that uh, is it is it true you commanded a aircraft carrier in your early twenties? A what? A, an aircraft carrier? Yeah, I was in the Canadian, the Maggie, the Magnificent. Yep. Yeah, but I was just an officer on board. I see. Like with many others, we were numerous. I'm curious because what you talk about, I mean, it seems that the Navy and the, the military, it's its almost the polar opposite where strength is a virtue and and rank is, is very important. Um, did you find yourself disenfranchised with, with being in the Navy? or No, I mean, I was happy there, but then I found something else. I mean, we're on a, all on a road. And uh, so being on a road... Um, I mean, you discover one thing and then you discover another. But the reality of the military is, is, and in the whole thing of competition is some people win and other people lose. But what about our common humanity? So it's something very simple. I mean, what I've learned at last is, is trying to live every day just to live simply and be together with people and have fun. 
Now, when you left the the Navy, I read that you you never really read philosophy or or explored in that sort of way of of thinking before. No, I'd been in the Navy, but I did philosophy after that. Yeah. Did you feel an emptiness at that time, or were you seeking anything in particular? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I can't say. I mean, I was suppose I was searching until uh, I found Lars and knew that that was where I should be. Did you before you started Lars in, in um, was it 1963 or? Four? Oh, 64. Did you have um? Did you have any conception of what how you you were going to spend your life? I mean, you you had been a professor for a time at U of T. No, I don't think so. I was waiting really to. I wanted to refine Pat Thomas, and that's what happened in 1963, 64. And the idea of creating a community with people with disabilities came up, and that's what happened. Your sense of Charity, and you talk about this in Finding Peace, it's it's very different than um, our usual conception of charity, where, which is um, almost pity, or, or we're on different levels. There's this idea of doing good, right, where we have to do good for, for others, and it's very outwardly looking. Your sense of charity, it's we're all together. Yeah. Can you, can you talk about that? Well, I think when I started living with people that I found had been put into a a bad institution. Uh, the idea was to be together, to eat together, and and to help them discover a life that was as full as possible to be, and to be happy. And I found with them discovering what happiness was, well, I was too. Right, and we have as much to learn from each other as as sure, we have to sure. give. I mean, that's the the secret. But you see, we're in a world where everything is stratified or hierarchy and you know people think they're better than others and some people don't whereas here it's just very simply to be with each other and learn to appreciate and to to love each person and to see their beauty it doesn't happen immediately because obviously there are ups and downs and difficulties and we touch our own difficulties in relating so it's a whole process I think we have to, you see, I mean, it, everybody must find their way, and I found my way. And I think there's a truth there in learning to live relationships and to be together and to rejoice together. And, and uh, you know, you get caught up in all the reality of everyday life, which are all the good and the bad and the fights and the fun and all the rest. But that's what community is about. Right. I mean, we all we all look for for belonging, um, sure, sure, and sure. but that can become a negative thing if it becomes too too strong, I guess, or too strongly identified with just just our group. Yeah, yeah that's sure that's a, the danger. But to remain open and and so on. I mean, one can get caught up in one's own circle. I think the important thing is to remain open. And and how do you do that? How do you practice doing that? It's not something you do, it's something just as we live. Uh, learning to accept people as they come. And here we have a lot of quite a number of assistants who come every year and they spend time here and they discover the beauty of people with living with disabilities and so on. But it's not something one does, it's a whole way of just being open to people as much as we can. You, you've said that uh, as humans we so easily fall into illusions, um, illusions of our own grandeur. Yeah. How do you see that happening, or how does that reflect in your own life? Well, community, you, you keep your feet on the ground. <laughs> when you're living with the same people every day, and, uh, you know, you, you just keep yourself on the ground, that's all. Be with people, have fun, and so on. Right. And, and, and when we don't... Uh, feel like we belong, that's when we we can fall into these illusions, or? That I don't know. I mean, we can. Everybody can fall into illusions and think they're better than others. But if you're in a community, you, you have reality in the face. Were you always 
spiritual growing up from, from an early age? I think so, yes, yes. Not always. I mean, I joined the Navy because I wanted to join the Navy, but for the rest. You talk about how um, your father, uh, when you were 13 and you said you wanted to join the Navy, he said, I, I trust you, and this, this had yeah. a very profound yeah. effect on you. I mean, the, what, what he taught was that trust is at the heart of everything, and he trusted me. And that was a, a transforming experience to, to yeah, feel that? Yeah, well, I think I see it later as a transforming experience, that I, and you can trust yourself. In Finding Peace, you, you quote Sigmund Freud and, and um, something along the lines of to live fully is to accept death. Do, do you still believe that? You know, I think it's a question of sex, accepting that we're human beings. I mean, let's let's face it, as you look around, there might be one or two people or a hundred. There might be a few people that are uh, 95. There might be a little bit more who are 88. But we're all going down. We are born to live and we are born to die. So the whole question is, to accept our reality as we are, that we're born fragile, weak, we can fall, have sicknesses, we can fall on a banana peel and break something. So it's the integrating death into life. It's to know that we're all weak. We're not God. We're not, we don't have to be, just let ourselves be ourselves and, and rejoice in being ourselves with others. And, and so, and you find the aging process quite, quite spiritual, even the 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 well, aging to be process. Human is to be spiritual. It's to love reality, to love people, uh, to love God, to be open to others. It's just to be who we are, and not to pretend that we have to be somebody else. And then, of course, other people help us to be ourselves. So that's what community is about. If if there was, I guess, one message you, you'd want to be to be remembered for, what would it be? What would it be? Um, to rejoice being with others, and to rejoice in people that have been wounded and pushed away. Create community with them. And, uh, and rejoice in life, which means to accept reality, just to accept reality with, with humility and uh, to accept who we are. We're human beings. We were born to live. We we're born to die. We're also fragile. We can fall sick. And rejoice in, in being. And don't run, seek running all the time up the ladder because you'll break your nose somewhere and you'll find yourself lonely. But if we're together, it's, uh, it's super. Well, Jean Vanier, thanks so much for talking to me. Okay. Well, keep seeking, keep rejoicing, discover who you are, and in rejoicing, just being who you are. I, I will certainly try. Okay. Peace to you, Kevin. Okay. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. That was my conversation with Canadian philosopher and humanitarian Jean Vanier. To find out more, you can check out his 1995 Massey Lecture, Becoming Human.